Dallas, you might have a problem. Welcome into Mavericks today. Harrison Graham and Jeffrey Cooperstein here. No, being 9-3 and three is not a problem. No, Luka Doncic looking like the MVP is not a problem. Josh Green, that might be a problem, Coop. Oh, brother. Uh, he has not been good to start this season, man. It's been pretty disappointing since he signed that three-year, what, $41 million extension with the Mavericks. And it just, it frankly hasn't worked out to this point in time. Green has really struggled through 12 games so far with three starts here, or his numbers as you see on screen. And I, I've just been disappointed in him overall. And I, what really disappoints me the most is I think his defense has regressed. Yeah, and what's so frustrating, Coop, is you and I said this all offseason. Like, don't extend him. Don't extend him. Not because we don't think he's a decent player. Not because we don't think he could earn an extension. But to me, one decent season out of three, which was last year, was not enough to justify a 12 plus million dollar per year contract Absolutely. and we thought it would be 14 or 14 a year it got him at just under 14 so we're like okay like it's not the worst contract it's still not it's not an awful contract but he just is not playing like a player who should earn 13 to 14 million dollars yeah. per year i mean we came on this show multiple times during the summer and we we're like i think we should wait and see what happens let him go to restricted free agency if he has a great season and the maps have to end up overpaying for him so be it but let's wait and see that again if he does it a second year in a row, there's no problem paying him that 15, even 16 million year, whatever the case may be. And now it just, it, it he's not, he's obviously not getting paid that extension until next season, but it kind of just makes you wonder why they didn't wait and why they didn't let this thing play out. Because what I'm seeing right now from Josh Green is I think he's lost all confidence going downhill to the basket. He's settling for jump shots when he's on the offensive end, and he just doesn't look like the confident guy he did last season. Yeah, and even that's why, like, even last year when his splits looked good, the field goal percentage and the three points percentage, he didn't shoot the ball a lot. It's not like he was a high volume guy. Like, 53% from the field, 40% from three, it's awesome splits. But when you're averaging nine points a game, it's kind of like, okay, this isn't quite adding up to me. Either yeah. we need to get this guy way more shots. Or when he does shoot, it's like so obvious that he has to shoot because he's that open and he's making those shots, which, hey, that's great. But, like, can you do that for 13 points per game? And the answer is clearly no. No, I, I, I don't think he's ever going to be that, that tertiary scorer that the Mavericks need behind Luka and Kyrie. I think he's more of your fourth, maybe even fifth scorer. And off the bench as well, he just really doesn't have a chance to make a mark on this team now. He did start last night uh, because the Mavs sat Kyrie Irving. They claim it was a foot sprain. I'll say it was the second night of a back-to-back. -back. I guess we'll see on Saturday uh, when the Mavericks take on the Milwaukee Bucks. But Gre Green just he hasn't got off the got off the mark this year, frankly. And the Mavs need to see more of him if they want to continue this great run they're on. Yeah, and look um, to your point too. Like if the defense is going to take a step back, I mean there may have to be a real conversation of okay, Jaden Hardy or Seth Curry needs more minutes because. Yeah, and if you're already sacrificing some defense, why not sacrifice a little more and get a guy who can at least score the basket? Yeah, we saw what Seth Curry did last night. We'll talk about this a little more later, but I think he's ready for a spot in this rotation. Jaden Hardy's obviously pushing for one as well. Uh, Jason Kidd wants to play Omax Prosper more. He even said as much in his pregame press conference. So the Mavs have, have some choices to make. So what do you guys think? What is your concern level over Josh Green's start, scale of 1 to 10? I mean, I never had major expectations, but considering you've already paid him, I mean, it's got to be an eight, eight and a half. Like, it's it's not a good start. Dude. Yeah, it, it's definitely concerning. I would say like an eight as well. I mean, they they just need more out of him, plain and simple. I don't know how, how much more uh, clear I can put it. The good news is, is the guy who is playing on a vet minimum contract, Derrick Jones Jr., if Josh Green was playing like this, we wouldn't be thrilled with the contract Green has, but... You'd like a lot more what he's doing, which is what making Derrick Jones' level of play on a vet minimum deal. Yeah. I mean, best contract on the team, let's be honest oh, right by now. by far. I mean, this guy was available in August, you know, six weeks after free agency. Mavs picked him up, gave him a guaranteed deal, and he's been absolutely awesome for the Mavericks, averaging almost 10 points a game, three and a half boards, shooting over 50%, and shooting 37% from three, which is something he's not really known for. I mean, this guy has been bounced around the NBA for six-ish years now, and Hopefully he finds a home in Dallas because I love what I'm seeing from him. Good thing. It's kind of, and I'll say this about Dante Exum as well. Good things just happen when Derek Jones is on the court and he, he just makes things happen both offensively and defensively. And I love what he's done with this. Team. Yeah. And I saw a stat today that the Mavs are now fifth in pace this year. I think they were either last or close to last last year. I ain't bringing in a guy like Derek Jones is, I won't say a big reason for that, but I think it's part of a reason. I said it in the preseason coop, like, when this guy's in the game, you need to play faster. You need to get out and run because 
He is a freak in the open floor. He is an athlete. Now, I'm not saying you're ever playing through a guy like that, but if you get three on twos and stuff like that, that guy's streaking down the yeah. sideline, like you can you can win with that type of player. And um, the fact that he's improved as a shooter as well, look, I don't know if he's going to shoot 37% all the year. It might end up being like 33, 34. But anything north of 30 with what you're getting defensively and his athletic traits – like, he's giving you more than Josh Green right now. That's just a fact. Absolutely. There, there was a play last night, and I love when the Mavericks run this play, where Derek Jones is kind of just hiding in the wing. The Mavs run a little pick and roll, and Jones just comes back door, and Luka throws him a simple alley-oop. And obviously, with Jones' athleticism, he's finishing that every time. And The Mavs have whatever they want on offense right now, man, and Derek Jones is, is a part of that. And I think we got to give Jason Kidd credit, too. Last year, it seemed like he didn't know how to use his personnel very well. He didn't have a good feel for the rotations. I mean, finding a real offensive role for Derrick Jones is not easy. And not the Mavs all. have been able to do it. And to Jones' credit, he's maximized those opportunities and is a he's a fixture in this starting lineup right now. He like, started he, every game so far, and that is not changing anytime soon. And yeah. it shouldn't change. He's played even – like, I think if he was playing – 80% of the level he is, you'd be like, oh, good decision to start I, I expected <laughs> zero out of Derrick Jones Jr. this season, and the, the fact that we're getting this is absolutely amazing. So credit to Nico Harrison and, like you said, Jason Kidd as well. Yeah, no doubt about it. Shout out to Prize Picks as well. Derrick Jones playing at a Prize Picks level this year. The best daily fantasy sports app on the market. PrizePicks.com slash CLNS is the place to go to sign up. Use our code CLNS when you create an account to get a deposit match up to $100. I want to revisit our season-long prize picks entry that both Coop and I made. We both felt good about this one. 20 to win 60 here. Got to wait a while to see if this pays off or not. But we took the more than on Luka points, the less than on Kyrie points. I felt like the Luka revenge tour, he was going to have a monster year, which he is. I thought Kyrie would play more of a secondary role, which he is. Well, Luca had the one stinker in New Orleans, so it's brought the points down a little bit. But early in the year, one really good, one really bad game can kind of impact the overall points. I'm still feeling good about this, Coop. I think Kyrie's going to be that 23 to 25 point guy. Yeah. We're, uh, we're, we're right on track here. Luca has one 40 point game, and, and we're 240. Yeah, and he already has dropped, he had a 44 pointer and a 49 pointer. He's already got a couple of those so far this year. So get started with PrizePix, prizepix.com slash CLNS. You can do entries for uh, games coming up, uh, season-long entries for those like we did, prizepix.com slash CLNS. Use our code CLNS to get a deposit match up to $100. And I got to say, Coop, not only Derek Jones helping, helping soften the blow of Josh Green's struggles, Tim Hardaway Jr., let's give the man a round Absolutely. of applause. Round, I mean, it kind of felt like he was halfway out the door. I think he was – he admitted he was. he was like, I thought I was going to be traded. And the guy is playing like a six-man of the year. Jason Kidd seemed to challenge him publicly on, on radio with Mark Stein before the season. Hardaway even admitted, I haven't had that combo with them. And you and I were like, oh, boy, this could That's be not good. a little contentious. But – Man, I mean, he's averaging, what, 18, 19 a game, shooting the ball unreal from Very three? Fit. And this is one of Tim's purple patches, man. He kind of goes through these where he's just hot and can't miss from three. I got really scared because with about six minutes left in the fourth last night, while the Mavericks were up big, Hardaway, uh, he banged knees with Kyle Kuzma and went mm. right out of the game. And Hardaway admitted as much after the game, yeah, he was scared that something happened to his knee. Uh, but he's completely fine, expected to play on Saturday against Milwaukee, so no harm, no foul there. Yeah, I, I think if the season were to end today, Hardaway would win sixth man of the year. He's been that good, and he's been that important to this team. And hopefully that continues, because if the Mavs are getting this hard away, then they made, absolutely made the right decision by I, not trading him. I mean, Dallas is a core four right now. Of Luka, Kyrie, Hardaway, and I'll throw Lively in there as well with his play. That's very, very good. Grant Williams has been good. He's had a couple of kind of clunkers offensively recently, but he's been as advertised. And then, hey, maybe Seth Curry becomes a part of this thing, and Look, going into the year, we talked about the overload at shooting guard. If we're going to put Josh Green into that bucket, we kind of assumed he yeah. would be in the rotation all year. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't care that I've given him an extension. Like, if other guys are going to produce at a better clip like Seth Curry, who's the ultimate pro, um, then I'm open-minded to uh, – sitting Josh Green for a couple games, if nothing else, to send a message. Seth is kind of like Tim, where he can just get into a microwave and yeah. get hot really quick, and that's kind of what he did in the fourth quarter. I love what I've seen from Seth, of course, like you said, the consummate professional, and hopefully the Mavs can find a role for him going forward. Derek Jones last night, again, another great game, 20-7. and seven. We already Multiple talked about it earlier. Multiple 20-point games for this guy. I, mean, it's I, unbelievable. I, think that, I believe that's his third or fourth 20-point game this season. 
This this is the most disappointing uh, stat line of the night. 37 minutes, four field goals attempted, none made for Josh Green. It just it, it hasn't it hasn't gotten for him this year. I mean, hasn't go, hasn't this was dangerously close to the Tony Snell 0 0 0 0 game. I mean, yes. he, he only had one assist. He did grab four rebounds. But to play that many minutes and basically do nothing in the stat sheet, I'm not saying he didn't have any contribution at all, but I, there are a lot of other guys that had more contribution in less minutes, like a Seth Curry. And, I mean, we got to continue to rave about Derek Lively. Oh, I mean, the guy's just been sensational. I mean. I, I tweeted this last night. Go follow me at Jeff underscore Coop 27. The Lively and Luke at Alley Oop is like that glitch you find in a video game, and you just keep Can't spamming. Stop it. You keep spamming until someone stops it. The yeah. Mavs and the Luke at Alley Oop is frankly unstoppable. Even if it's Lively, if it's Derek Jones, hell, even Dwight Powell's getting in on the action too. I mean, this this team is an elite offensive team. And by the way, Luca, after what I think was the worst game of his career last night, really picked it up. I mean, and even then, on a 7 of 18 night, he still almost has a triple-double. He's terrific. I think he's the MVP frontrunner right now. Um, it just one final thought on Lively. Like, if it wasn't for Victor Wimbanyama, who's been up and down, by the way, I mean, he might be right there in the Rookie of the Year conversation. I mean, yeah, he, he's absolutely. been, he's been I mean, that good. Chet Holmgren's going to qualify for that sure. as well. Not that he should, but Brandon yeah. Miller's going to be in the talk, but like, all NBA is on the table for your for, uh, for Lively, Lively will be at the All Star festivities in February, playing in the rookie sophomore game no or whatever version of that we have. No doubt. Uh, about big it. game Saturday, Saturday evening, Milwaukee Bucks, Good Giannis test. Antetokounmpo uh, on the road. It'll be a tough one for sure. Hopefully the Mavs can. If the Mavs win this game, it'd be awesome. I believe they play the Kings on Sunday, so a little tough back to back there. Yeah, uh, in Milwaukee, you'd like to split. You'd like to split that, honestly. Split yeah. Milwaukee, Sacramento. I mean, to win in Milwaukee would be would be a huge statement. Um, obviously, we'll keep tabs on Kyrie Irving. Um, you wonder if they'd maybe he's gonna play. You think he'll play both? He's gonna play. Play both. All right, I love it. I love it. Uh, Coop, uh, Coop knows all, as you guys know. Uh, let us know who you got. D A L for the Mavericks. M I L for the Bucks. Enjoy your weekend. Should be a couple of fun basketball games for your Dallas. See you guys. Mavericks.